Today we are going to be discussing wedding ceremonies, wedding officiants, how to find one for your wedding, and also learning more about your company. Correct? Yes. Awesome. Sepida has written a blog article for us on the Just Sandy Weddings blog and it's going live today. And in this article she talks about her tips for how to hire an officiant for your day. What kind of questions should you be asking them? What should you look for? And why is it important to find someone who fits you as a couple um, and the, the overall dynamic of your wedding day best? Um, as well, you'll be talking a little bit more about the services that you provide. Sure. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, and why don't you just uh, start by telling us a little bit about your company. Yeah, so um, the name of my company is Vida Ceremonies, as you said. Um, I started this uh, about a year ago. Um, we moved to Cologne about a year and a half ago, okay. and um, I had to make a shift in my career and job and um, just have a, a definite passion for connecting with people mm -hmm. and being part of their lives and um, part of their, you know, kind of me telling their story. And so this was definitely a right fit for me personally. Yeah, um, that's great. So, yeah. Awesome. And what is it you did before this? Um, well, I have a master's in electronics. I worked in high tech and okay. uh, in energy efficiency for yeah. about 25 years before I made the change. Neat. So that's, mm -hmm. that's quite a shift to it's go from shift, that to yeah. weddings. Yeah. However, all that experience would give you, I would think, a very unique ability to communicate and to present um, many different types of ceremonies because of the experience that you would have had professionally sure. all yeah, those years sure. of business. Yeah. So definitely, and I think another part that is really interesting is when you, when you have that type of a background, uh, collaboration is a huge, um, just mm -hmm. an innate mm -hmm. part of you, right? So you're not really thinking about just yourself, you're thinking about other people you're working with. And in this case, it means really uh, that what I really want to do is to make sure that it's about the couple, right? And I right. collaborate with a couple to make sure that we, mm -hmm. we really bring their vision to life, right? Yeah, because that's great. really that's really what their day is all about. So Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. So now, why the name Vida Ceremonies? Oh, that's a good question. So Vida, um, for two big reasons. One is um, Vida means life in, okay. in Spanish. But most importantly, that's my mom's name who oh, gave me life, okay. and I, I'm very fortunate for that. So, yeah. So I think that's, I honor and cherish that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's a beautiful thing. It's a great name. It's. I mean, it sounds wonderful, and it's nice and short to write and yes. to remember. <laughs> well, that <laughs> was another reason that people could pronounce it easier than yeah. my first name. So. <laughs> yeah, that's great. When I started my my very first company. I had a business name that you could hardly pronounce, and it was three three syllable words. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was in fairness like nineteen, oh, so yeah. for sure. <laughs> I ambitious. learned that lesson <laughs> shortly, and people were like, "I just can't say your company name." <laughs> Oops, that's a problem, right? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of one. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, what services do you provide? Yeah, so um, main focus is wedding officiation, mm -hmm. uh, but in that, I think one of the unique things that I bring to the table is um, I really work with a couple to find out what exactly they want. So mm -hmm. people often ask me, what's your style? And, um, you know, it's a it's an interesting question, right? Yeah. But uh, for me, I like my style is really to meet what the couple wants, right? So it's, you know, really embracing the philosophy um, that this is about the couple. This mm -hmm. is about what they want. And so working with them to really bring um, what they want into their big major, you know, events and yeah, their day. So, sure. um, so what I do is I really kind of work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, you know, I, I offer an hour of free consultation before mm -hmm, we even great. discuss anything else so mm -hmm. that we could talk about what their vision is for the day. You know, mm -hmm. I um, you have seen enough weddings now that I, I can ask a lot of questions about what what they want from that day. And oftentimes they haven't thought about a lot of the details that kind of mm -hmm. makes a difference in terms of how things are shaped. Right. Right. So yeah. um, after that one hour, they'll have uh, a, a good sense of who I am and mm -hmm. whether we connect or not. Right. Right. And yeah. the second thing is also 
um, they have a good sense of what the day could look like. You know, oftentimes people haven't been married before, right? right? Yeah. Uh, hopefully yeah. more often than not. But, <laughs> but um, you know, that just gives them a sense of what's, uh, what they could be looking for for that day, right? That's great. Um, so yeah. that's before we even discuss, do we want to work together or not, right? And I think mm -hmm. through that process, which is a very organic and natural process, uh, people get a sense for who I am and, mm -hmm. you know, most of the time they connect and, uh, yeah, and we great. move forward, right? Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. It is really important and that's one of the things that you talk about in the article that mm -hmm. you wrote is that you need to feel a connection um, and a level of comfort with the person that you're going to hire because you're spending a very significant portion of your day with them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think more than anything else, it's a significant part of your life cycle right so mm -hmm. this decision to get married is no one takes that lightly yeah, and i think sure. that who you share that intimate moment with who actually makes that happen uh, shouldn't be taken lightly so for sure um oftentimes people may may think okay well this is the priest who who's done that in the past well you know, uh, more often than not, um, people are trying, you know, like are kind of going with m less traditional mm -hmm. uh, ceremonies. And I, I want the couples to know that this is, it's in their power to decide right. how they want it formed. You don't have to follow a, a prior prescription. You don't have mm -hmm. to make it mm -hmm. conventional. You could make it whatever you want, yeah, any theme you want. Great any story you want you know there is definitely legal parts that need to happen yeah of yeah. course but but then beyond that it's definitely you could be as creative as you want it yeah for sure well it's i mean i i'm married it's a very meaningful experience you know you you walk down that aisle you stand together at the front your family and your friends whether it's a small group or a big group of them are there people that matter most to you and you want to make it about more than just signing the paperwork mm -hmm. and, you know, officiating your union. You want mm -hmm. it to be about um, you as a couple and your story and the love that has brought you to the place that you're at. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really great thing for a couple if they can weave that in to their ceremony experience. For sure. Um, we've, as wedding photographers, we've been to weddings where they the couple does some interactive parts of the ceremony mm -hmm. with their family and friends and there's many different ways they can get people involved exactly so that they exactly. they honor you know they honor their mom or mm -hmm. their grandma or, or whoever it is that is there that they want right. to yeah, yeah and i think that i i've heard that there are some um, some officiants who um don't are not perhaps as open to bringing mm -hmm. someone else in to mm -hmm. say a prayer or participate even in the ceremony and I think yeah. you know that that's sh like I'd like to be able to include anyone mm -hmm. that the couple wants any any way that the couple wants right mm -hmm. um, sure well really or important. the words that that you say as mm -hmm. well um I mean we've done a lot of weddings and it's pretty common that a couple says I uh, we asked for this and it wasn't said oh, okay. we they suggested something we told mm -hmm. them that really wouldn't make us feel comfortable and then it was done anyways mm -hmm. and so it is a really important thing that when you hire somebody you're finding an officiant who you have that confidence and trust with that they are going to take the time to understand you and what is meaningful to you and they are going to weave that into your ceremony and they're going to make it everything that you know they promised and so that's something that you've obviously taken a keen interest in doing absolutely and i think you mentioned time i think that's another thing that i um shared in the in the blog article mm -hmm. that you know you really want to um find someone who is really investing time mm -hmm. for you and in you sure. understanding you knowing you knowing what you want um, writing the script and this is something that you know it's really important to customize for what you want mm -hmm. and then having enough time not to rush you but share that script with you it is yeah, your script right sure. so you get to read it you get to comment you have time for back and forth you know um, and, mm -hmm. and any alteration you want um, yeah you know definitely make sure that that is part of what you're looking for and what you what you find in your efficient yeah for sure so now you um, are an ordained minister, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. So tell us uh, a little bit about what that allows you to do as far as where you can travel to officiate mm -hmm. weddings. Yeah, that's a good question. So I am um, I am an ordained minister and within Canada, um, there are only um, two provinces that I cannot 
uh, officiate in with advance notice, like in other prov in BC, obviously I can right. I am legal yeah. legally um, you know certified to um, to officiate weddings. In uh, other provinces within Canada, if I have enough notice, I can get a temporary license okay. um, to officiate weddings. And the rest depends on, um, you know, if, if it's in the U.S., uh, it depends on uh, the rules of each state. Right. Um, most of yeah. it, it's it's much easier than, than Canada and, and can mm -hmm. be done, but we'll have to look at it state by state. Right. Um, yeah. And I've, I have gone around the world as far as uh, France for people who maybe oh. more want just the ceremonial aspect of things, right? right. Of the yeah. of, of the you know kind of conducting the ceremony for their guests. Yeah. And they take the um, legal matters, you know, either prior or after the ceremony. Right. Well I know even in Canada that's been done before at some friends of ours, they got married and they really had they had someone in their family that was meaningful to mm -hmm. them. So he did the whole ceremony, but they brought in somebody to do the official paperwork. Yeah, and uh, what sure. And I says. encourage that. I I'm, I have actually one wedding this uh, this summer, hmm. where the couple wants to bring someone that they really connect with and a, a good friend, you know. And I think this yeah. is. Yeah, I can take it personal and say, how come you can't connect with me? I'm so personable and right. connectable. But, but reality is people have different different desires, right? So you have mm -hmm. to honor that, respect that, and, and just mm -hmm. work with them. So yeah, so I am going to be there uh, more to help them through the process because this person who is going to be conducting the ceremony doesn't have experience, right? Right. So I will even sit down with mm -hmm. them and go through the questionnaires that I have and things and help them through that. I even offer services to write the scripts for for the family oh, members wow. if they want, yeah. um, and just kind of be there to do the paperwork also, which definitely has its own legal things that mm -hmm. we need to follow through. So right. we won't take that lightly as mm -hmm. um, as you know um, people who are assigned or given the power to do that. Yeah. Uh, but definitely within that, we'll we'll work with the couple and what they what they wish. Yeah, true. that's great. So is there any other unique things that you offer with your ceremony, ceremonies that we haven't mm -hmm. talked about yet? Uh, yeah, sure. So one of the other things that I, um, I think it actually you will find um, mm -hmm. um, interesting is that I definitely believe that, you know, people pay obviously for their officiant to come and do the ceremony, but they also um, pay for, for photos because that stays as mm -hmm. memories or the video because that stays as memories. And I think it's really important to uh, work with the uh, bride and groom, with our planners or, or the mm -hmm. decorator to really know what the theme of their of their ceremony mm -hmm. and or the whole wedding Absolutely. is, what the colors are. And, you know, obviously I don't want to um, come with a really odd color and photo bomb all the, you know, yeah. all the photos, right? Because Wearing lime green when it, it's like gold. And, exactly. Yeah. Something, something that kind of blends in, something that is um, appealing visually, right? Because again, it's a work of art. It's mm -hmm. not only in words, but the visual thing is, you know, definitely there too. Right. And so um, again, my years of uh, collaboration it gives me that um, that whole sense of I want to make sure that I collaborate with whoever else mm. is part of your um, wedding um, in terms of creating your wedding and your vision um, so that we actually are holistic in terms of what we bring to the table. For sure. Right? And that, again, that is an important thing um, from the perspective of photographer and videographer, which I have direct experience with. Again, um, I, it's a little bit up to the couple as far as you know, sometimes they, they want a very formal ceremony, and so then an officiant is going to obviously accommodate that. Mm -hmm. But it's nice for couples that that really want to prioritize photos and mm -hmm. capturing moments with the people that are part of their life. Mm -hmm. If the officiant that they hire works with them and with the photographer to make sure that we can work around each other well when photos are yeah. happening during the ceremony. Yeah. And not all officiants do that. Yeah. Um, some aren't willing to step off to the side at any point um, mm -hmm. for the sake of you know getting some photos where it's just the couple visible in the shot. And I know that's something you know you're mentioning is that you mm -hmm. You work with people to make sure that the photos Absolutely. and the video and the full wedding day experience is going to be all about the couple first mm -hmm. and foremost. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's another thing to keep in mind in terms of, again, time is um, arrive. I arrive early just uh, because I want to make sure that I do connect with the photographer and the right. videographer. And yeah, that's it's great. not a rush thing, right? And we talk through, okay, <laughs> what's what's the what how much room for movement do we have? When there's the first kiss, how do I move back? Right? right. If they're saying their own vows and 
I'm not the one carrying the, the microphone, how can I step away? So they have yeah. more of their private moment, right? Mm -hmm. So we talked through all of that before the wedding, um, that actually technical elements of how are you handling the mic for the videographer and yeah. for, you know, for the speakers and all of that. Um, those are things that actually couples start thinking about, oh yeah, so do we need to have everyone pinned or right. can you step away? Sure. Am I going to hold it? What am I going to do with my bouquet? What am I going to do with my piece of paper of the vows? Like, because I don't have pockets right. that I'm putting it in. You know, all those details we we talk through, Yeah, um, which, is, which is very helpful not to cause hiccups during the ceremony. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, so then with uh, the weddings that you've done so far, what has been a memorable experience that you could share with us? Mm. Well, first off, I'm very, um, probably one of the few officiants who probably cries for every single oh, couple. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I, can't, I can't say, you know, like I think every couple has their own unique personality and they all, they all create this little, um, space in my heart you know at mm. the end of the That's day right. and i'm so grateful my heart is big enough to have room for everyone yeah <laughs> um but i would say that my biggest memory is actually from last thursday which was the valentine's day um we had a, a large collaboration with um some of our local vendors mm -hmm. here we um we had a um, event called Kelowna for love where we offered um 19 couples free weddings and this wow. was absolutely free um not only the officiation part but the photography videography hair makeup mm -hmm. um cupcakes everything was free there was fully decorated and i, I thought it was really interesting it started with like we want to have a community giving and it started getting bigger and bigger in terms of what we want to provide and it was yeah. so heartwarming to know mm -hmm. that there are actually people out there uh, who just step in and spend hours, and I mean hours of their day, yeah, prior day. and after, right, um, and before, hmm. to just give back to the community and the, the happiness we saw from these couples, who some, some of them really, you know, their stories was other than, if you hadn't provided this event, we wouldn't have been able to um, get, get, get married, married, you know, hmm. because sometimes it's financially hard for people, right? For sure. So, yeah. um, that was definitely something that I'm I'm still buzzing from and, and excited about the fact That's that we great. managed to pull that together. Yeah. And yeah, 19 is a lot. Yeah, it was a lot, but it was just, you know what, it was just so sweet and so smooth and so, mm. you know, I think just really the power of love made it all happen because we all came from a space of our heart with giving love. And really, I think that just kind of connected with everyone. And wow. it was definitely very sweet. Yeah, very that's sweet. great. If you're just checking in with us, we're chatting with Sepida uh, from Vita Ceremonies. And we're talking about her business, about the services that she provides, uh, as well as about just general tips and advice for couples on hiring someone to officiate your wedding ceremony. So Matt, no matter where you are watching this video from, even if it's a replay months down the road and you know, you're in another country, there's valuable information that we're mm -hmm. chatting about. Um, in regards to how important a decision it is to find someone that you connect with, um, someone who is going to work with you to make your wedding ceremony memorable and personalized to you. And uh, you're based here in the Okanagan, yes, right? Yes. But you also travel, yes, I which do, is a, which is a great thing. And so you've written an article for the blog. And if you're watching this, you can check out the blog at justandyblog.com to read Sepida's tips. She talks about five important considerations to uh, to think about and questions to ask when hiring an officiant, as well as some general tips on what the wedding ceremony experience is like mm -hmm. and what. Uh, what you should be looking for and things you should be thinking about in those months leading up to your wedding as you're planning that out with mm -hmm. your officiant. Mm -hmm. uh, you also talk a little bit more about your business mm -hmm. and we've got great tips in this video too so definitely watch the replay if you missed the beginning. Um, so let's talk a little bit more here um, about you and as an entrepreneur Running a business is about so much more than just paying the bills, mm -hmm. about you know providing a set of services. Mm -hmm. It's about pouring your heart into something. And when we pour our hearts into what we do, it, that comes out of a place 
um, that has been developed through many experiences and relationships. So tell us about someone or something that has inspired mm -hmm. you to excel at what you do and to provide the type of experience that you do at Vita mm -hmm. Ceremonies. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I really, and this is, this is a question that oftentimes people ask about what inspires you in life, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as, you, as you go through different stages of your life, that may change. Yeah. And so I am at this stage of my life where I have two wonderful kids. Mm -hmm. um, they're in their teenage years. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that they have been my biggest inspiration. You know, of course, um, you know, a lot of family members, a lot of friends have always influenced me. But at this point of life, really, they are my inspiration. And it's not only because mm -hmm. I feel like I have to provide to them or I have to parent them, but it's... Yeah. Who, genuinely what you learn from them genuinely how they impact you and make you grow and make you be a different person right so um with with my kids i totally believe that instead of really preaching to them on what they should do or what they shouldn't do that i really need to be leading by example mm -hmm. i really need if i want them to exercise instead of telling them to exercise i really need to be rolling out my yoga mat and yeah. and, and yoga do yoga right in the middle of the busy um living room with all the toys and everything around it's okay it doesn't have to be a you know fun like candle there for you to do yeah yoga. you yeah. have to find your way to do it because mm -hmm. you're leading by example because you're showing them what life is all about mm -hmm. right absolutely and so for this uh, kind of starting my business also um you know, there is a lot of fear that goes into it. You know that, right? Yeah, like fear absolutely. of how you're going to pay your bill. Is it going to be successful or not? Is this the right fit for you mm -hmm. or not? And and I kind of feel like, okay, fine. You know, you go forward. There may be failures. And as long as you hold yourself up and your head high and just basically go based on, I am going to learn from this. I'm going to improve and I'm just going to take one day at a time and and move yeah. forward you know that's really what i want them to see i want them to mm -hmm. see that mm -hmm. life is about successes and failures and and you will only be successful if you embrace those failures and mm -hmm. learn from it and absolutely you know kind of um try to get feedback right and mm -hmm. i think this is this is another thing that's really important for me the kids um are the most authentic and the most um mm -hmm. honest people right i mean they they tell you what they think and yeah. I really, really, really make an effort of bouncing off ideas. You know, yeah, they have a different yeah. perspective. It's a different generation. So first off, I need to honor that, right? Right. Say, yeah. There is a generational gap. I want to make sure I acknowledge that. But then, mm -hmm. you know, use that to my advantage. But at the same time, oftentimes, you know, like, mom, you look horrible. And I know when they say <laughs> it, it's not because they are mean. Yeah. They're saying it because they really want me to look better. Or when, you know, I oftentimes, my daughter is a great writer and mm. oftentimes bounce off, you know, ideas off of her. Mm. What do you think? How does this sound? Does it sound too cheesy? Does it sound, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's great. And I think it's really, really been an inspiration to have both of them help me through this. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, absolutely. Whole stage. Mm. Well, and I think another point too is that you're a mother. And so as a mother, you understand when you, when you officiate these wedding ceremonies, you understand how meaningful that experience is for the parents yeah, absolutely. Um, or whoever's there that has helped raise those individuals getting married. And so you can bring a certain depth too into the experience that you provide um, as well as into the understanding that you have on, you know, family dynamics and, and what that would be like, because I mean, you're a ways away from that stage. You haven't experienced it yourself yet, but you have children, you know how much you love them mm -hmm. and you can imagine, I'm sure what that's going to be like when you hit that stage of life with them. And so it just brings, um, an extra level of meaning and yeah, for yeah, sure, it's like that for me too. You know, mm -hmm. I have children as well. And when I photograph weddings, I'm always thinking, well, my photos of my kids, they matter so much to me yes. and I'm holding on to these moments that just they're gone in the blink of an eye but yeah. I can look at these photos and I can remember, remember and it can cherish. bring me back for sure. and so it brings so much passion into what I do for couples mm -hmm. and likewise you know you've mentioned how this is a life-defining moment when you get married um, it's a very important stage of life and it's something that shapes your future forever and so to be part of that is a really incredible honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. It's definitely um, combining that. And I think this is the thing, like having life experience from mm -hmm. uh, 
yes, I might not have been an efficient for a long time, right? But I think just really being able to pull from everything you've learned for mm -hmm. all your life to all your personal connection, whether it's with the kids or with your family or with people in the companies you worked in, right? Yeah. Just pulling all that in and really thinking of it holistically, of what it means in terms of mm -hmm. connecting with people, touching mm -hmm. people's heart and really having that in intuition yeah, to see sure. what, what you want because what you want might be totally different than another mm -hmm. another bride or another couple you know yeah so absolutely it's really, yeah, really fun that's great stuff. so if uh, people watching this video want to connect with you where do they find your work uh, on social media and what is your website address mm -hmm. yeah so my um website is um vidaceremonies.com and I'm also on Instagram and uh, on Facebook uh, at Vida Ceremonies. Great. That's awesome. Uh, if you watch this from the beginning, you'll know that uh, Sepida has written an article for the Just Andy Weddings blog, which has gone live today with five, how to find, <laughs> well, there's a live moment, <laughs> ringing phone <laughs> interruption. Um, how to find the red, white, right wedding officiant <laughs> for your ceremony. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've talked already on this video uh, about some of those tips that she has in the article, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of extra information that we haven't talked about here. So if you are planning your own wedding, if you might be getting engaged and have an interest in learning a little bit more about wedding ceremonies and what it's like to have someone officiate your wedding mm -hmm. ceremony, or if you know somebody who's engaged and might benefit from this information, please tag this them in this post uh, about this video that we've recorded. Check out the blog, it's justandyblog.com and you'll see Sepeda's article there on the homepage as well as the wedding planning page. And read a little bit more about her advice, learn more about her company, and definitely be sure to check in with her on her website, follow her on social media, Give her some love. She's yeah. delightful. <laughs> Definitely connect. Even if you feel like you are in a different part of the world and you want to choose an officiant in that mm -hmm. area, but you have some questions, by all means, drop me a note. I'll be more than happy to help out. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So you're at, at Vita Ceremonies on Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook and then VitaCeremonies.com. Right. It's a website. My email and contact form on, on website you can find easily. Great, that's mm -hmm. awesome. The blog is at justandyblog.com. Check it out. We also offer a lot of other great wedding planning tips and advice from other professionals, as well as weekly contests, podcasts, and a whole lot more. So check it out, get inspired about your own wedding, or share it with somebody who may benefit from that info as well. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for joining us. Sure, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. And goodbye. Bye. <laughs>